Hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here and welcome to yet another episode of Season 3 of the New Bike Build Series. This is where we took a 2018 BMW S1000 RR with the premium package that I purchased from my good friends here at Sills BMW and with the help of our amazing channel sponsors, we're adding some outstanding parts onto this motorcycle and at the end of the build series, we make this motorcycle available for everyone viewing. Information on how you might win this motorcycle is in the description. But in today's episode, Zach is going to go over a lot of the features on the S1000RR and explain how cool they are. Let's check it out. Welcome back. We're going to go over some awesome features on the S1000 today. Okay. Uh, I don't think we've done this before in the past, so just kind of show what this bike is actually capable of letting you know and doing and how you can adjust it and really uh, customize it for yourself without even buying any parts. You can just do this right out of the box. And show some other things that maybe your dealer didn't set up for you that you didn't even know existed on the dash because you didn't look through the book yet. Okay. Uh, definitely, if you have, if there's a rainy day, I would sit in the garage with the owner's manual and just go through it. It's, it's amazing what you can learn from the owner's manual. Wow. Uh, definitely a good read. It gets a little confusing with the dash stuff, but uh, that's how we're going to show it. So as it comes right out of the box, this is all you get. And for many people, this is all that's set up. I didn't even set the clock yet. We're going to show how to do that. So first thing we're going to do is just set that clock. So everything is done with this set button here. Okay. So we push set. This is our race. This is our race screen okay. for the racetrack. This would tell us our best lap down here and our current lap up there. This is the current intake air temp sensor okay. reading. Uh, race info is where we set up all our parameters for that other screen. Okay. We're going to go to the setup menu because that's where the clock's at. So are you we gonna... hold okay. the set button to get into the next menu. So now we're going to skip that one for now. And now we're going to go to equipment and we're going to hold the set button again. Okay. And that gets us in and then we see our clock. Yep. So to set it, I'm just going to hold set and it's going to go to minutes first. And you can see that's flashing, and then we have 12.38, so it actually was pretty close, amazingly. Uh, we just move that up to 38, hold set, but it's not AM, so we got to switch that to PM. We just cycle through, Okay. and now we got 12 PM. Yep. That was pretty crazy how close the clock was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever had yeah. that. So now that we're done, we can just push set and we'll cycle through and it gets us through a bunch of other settings that we'll go over. But if I wanted to just get back home, I have to go to exit, hold the set button, and then exit one more time. And then I can push the trip, which is the top, and I'm back to my home screen. Okay. Uh, where most of the settings that you're going to want to deal with are in this setup menu. Okay. And then the equipment. That's where most everything that people are going to use is located. Okay. So we know the we know the clock. The next thing we can look at is how bright our display is. It's right in the middle right now. Yeah. It has a little photo eye right here. That, so it knows if it's dark out or if you go under a bridge, you'll see the dash light up. This sure. is mainly for nighttime. Okay. I usually just leave that at 5. We can set a speed. So say all your speed limits around here are 65 miles per hour and you want to go 66. You can set a speed warning for 66. Your shift light will come on. It will flash it however that's set at whatever brightness and it will say speed. Nice. That way you know that you've exceeded the speed that you want to go. Sure. Uh, this lets you know if a headlight bulb is out, your license plate light's out. It would show lamp on the screen yeah. and then have a little exclamation point and have an arrow pointing backwards or forwards to let you know which direction to look for a light being out. That's cool. The reason they have on and off is when that lamp warning comes on, you lose your engine temperature. And it was a problem when we disconnect the headlights and taillights for racetrack use. That mm -hmm. lamp warning would always be on, and then you didn't know your engine temp at the racetrack. Right. So that's why you're able to turn it on and off. And it also comes in handy if you, for some aftermarket light bulbs that don't work so well. And then shut the lamp warning <laughs> off. Right. Uh, this is a cool one. This should, I think, should always, they should have sent this turned on. We're going to hold it till it starts blinking. And then I just push up or down on the button over here and cycle through. This is going to show us how far we've leaned over or are leaning over. 
This oh, is wow. the real-time display of what you're leaning over. If you do slow, it shows it and leaves it on the screen longer. If you do fast, it just displays real quick. Yeah. I usually set it up for mid. Okay. It's enough time to look at it and see that you're, whatever, 30 degrees or however far over. Uh, this here is going to put a graph up in the middle that we're going to see that wasn't on the dash before. And it's going to show on the ride how often the traction control intervened. The percentage oh, cool. of time that intervened yeah. on your ride. So we just hold this then once we're set, get to the next one. It's going to do the same thing for the ABS. It's going to put a graph up and show how often the ABS had to intervene on your ride. Okay. So we just put that on, hold the button, and now we're going to exit and we'll take a look back at our home screen. It's going to look totally different. So we just exit this and then push the trip button. Now we're back on our home screen. You see we gained the zeros up here. Yeah. Our max left and max right is recorded for either each lap if you're in the lap timer mode or just your ride. Okay. Once you turn the key off, you do lose your max lean angle. So if you got a good one, you're going to want to take a picture. <laughs> right. Uh, the top is your current lean angle. That's what you yeah. can look at while you're riding. Mm -hmm. And then the milliseconds is our ABS, and the percent is the DTC. You would see a little bar graph. Oh, if it was a little nicer out, we could take it back out and make those light up, but yeah. it's not really necessary. You guys got the point. Yeah. Uh, so let's go back in. The next menu we're going to look at is going to be the suspension. Okay. Because there are no traditional clickers on this electronic suspension. If yes. you want to adjust your compression and rebound, um, I don't even think most people know how to do it. They just think that you're stuck with what it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if in the last video if you caught it when I was riding back or if it's even going to make the cut, but I hit a big bump and it bounced me up off the seat. Yeah. These bikes are sprung for, it says in the book, a 187 pound rider. Okay. So I'm about 30 pounds light of that. So what I like to do when I'm riding them is get back to our setup menu and then enter it and then get to DDC mm -hmm. and then I got to hold the set button again so we can enter that menu. Mm -hmm. And now we're in and I can adjust my rebound and compression on the nice. rear. It has two adjustments. So I'm going to take out some rebound because I think I'm going to be stuck riding this bike with the rev limiter on, right? Yes, you are. Yeah, Thank so you gonna... so much for putting the braking <laughs> miles on it. So we're going <laughs> to drop that and we're going to drop our compression to... I've been taking off three, and it's still been doing fine in street cornering, yeah. but it just keeps me from getting kicked over the seat. <laughs> okay. Um, the front, you cannot adjust compression and rebound independently. Okay. So it's just a dampening number, and it's plus seven or minus seven. So okay. it kind of does both at the same time. There is an available rod. It's a HP part that you can put on your forks, like you see on the race bikes, that rod that tells the front suspension how far it's moving. Yeah. And when you install that rod, then you can do compression and rebound independently. Oh, wow. Uh, I, haven't had, I don't have an issue with the front end of these bikes at all, so I just leave it at zero for now. But if uh, you were hitting the brakes and it was really diving, you probably want to put that number up. Or if you're doing a lot of wheelies or something, you'd want to put it up. Or if, if you think it feels too harsh, you would lower it. Okay. Uh, after... You do something which is called setting sag, which is setting your spring free travel. You would have to calibrate the DDC system. Okay. Uh, we're going to go over that. We're going to set sag on this motorcycle. Sweet. I don't think we're going to do it today. we got to break it in. Yeah. Suspension components have to break in just like the engine. So okay. after the first service, we'll probably show setting the sag. And then after we set the sag, we'll have to calibrate the DDC. That's where it's done. Then in our racetrack menu, yep. this is where we go to change our tachometer once we do oh, the first service. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think we may have shown that before. If not, we'll show it again later. Yeah. But if I wanted to change it, I just hold it. It's going to flash. I can go up RPMs. Gotcha. And then that's when my shift light's going to come on. Okay. We're going to go back down to 7,000 since we're breaking it in. Yep. Uh, that's when the light shuts off. Okay. This is how bright it is. We can adjust that just with simple again. You should be able to see it getting dimmer. Yep. What do you like? Is that about 100? Or yeah, I just leave it at 100. Mm -hmm. it, but if at nighttime, that might be annoying, so then you might drop it down. You can adjust how quickly it flashes. Sweet. There's four. There's eight. It could just come on solid. Eight's a little bit much. Yeah. <laughs> We'll just leave it for. It's like there's an emergency yeah. going on here, buddy. Yeah, imagine yeah. seeing that. That would look like a flasher almost at nighttime. Yeah. Uh, this is where our best lap is set on that 
racetrack computer. So this puts it in the fourth line. You can move that around. That's how long your lap time is shown after you trigger it. Okay. This is, if you're using an infrared lap sensor, which is also an HP part and would get under, installed under your tailpiece. Yeah. So you could go set up an infrared device at the racetrack then, and it'll keep track of your lap times automatically. But everyone has those little infrared things now. Yeah. You would set, if it's within, so this is saying if it's within 10 seconds of your lap time, it's going to trigger it because that way it knows that it's your infrared device, not everyone else's. Right. It's kind of hard to explain. It's in the book. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense what you said it. Uh, the blip is not like the auto blipper. That is something with the infrared also. Okay. I don't remember exactly what it is. And then this is trigger. That's how your lap time is triggered. When it's in auto, you can use either of these buttons, the tripper set or the high beam, okay. flash to pass, yep. or infrared if it's in auto. If you wanted it to be just the high beam, you can go to, I think it says manual or external if you only wanted the infrared to do it. Okay. Yeah, auto seems like the best one because yeah, you can really use either is. or. And then uh, here's something else we're going to show later on. This is a pit lane speed limiter. Oh. Right now it's off. Yeah. But uh, some racetracks have a pit lane speed limiter. If you're actually racing, you have to. If you got to come in for a tire change, you would need it. I like to use it for 25 mile per hour zones. So I'll go out and find out what like 25 miles per hour is in second gear, which I think is usually 3,000 RPM or something. So I'll set this at 3,000. And it only works while you're moving because it knows vehicle speed. That must have been maybe third gear was 3,500 or something. Okay. So you set that, and then you hold, while you're riding, you hold the start button and the throttle, and it's only going to go up to that RPM at that gear. In this case, 3,500. In this case, 3,500. And it's going to sound sweet. It has a soft rev limiter, yes. Yeah. So we'll do a flyby on that. And then as soon as you let off, you get whatever throttle position you're at. Okay. So if you have the throttle wide open, it's going to give you wide open throttle Ooh. and launch you off. Yeah. I believe that's only available in slick mode and user mode also. Okay. So that's all our racetrack settings. Some good stuff in there. Heck yeah. You could factory reset everything mm -hmm. if you get too lost or you really just jumbled up your dash, but I don't think you can even really do that. We're back home. This is our lap timer screen. Uh, can't really do much without having lap times on it already. Right. Once you do have recorded lap times, you can go back and look at your lap time. You can look lap by lap what your throttle position was, how much you braked. It, it records all of that. Oh, yeah. And like I said, it has the best lap function. It lights up this little timer light over here when you're going to be on your fast lap because it's looking 100 meters at a time and... Um, comparing your current time to your last time and if it's better it's going to light that light up so you know oh i'm going to keep going faster because i'm going to go faster than i did last time that's sweet in race info that's pretty much this is all your lap time settings it records your best ever lap time your last lap time and you can delete it back to zero so that's just the race info storage center so that's pretty much all we have for the dash. Uh, Mode-wise, this is all your traction control levels. Okay. With the uh, 2017 and 18, they added the user. Okay. Rain mode actually does detune power. We went over that. Yeah. It used to drop to 140 horsepower. I don't know if it's more or less now. I haven't seen a number. Okay. Um, sport mode. It gives you that gives you the full 189, 190 horsepower. But if you go wide open throttle it's only going to open the throttle plates gradually as if you rolled them on every time. Okay. And you'll see it because when you go wide open throttle, you'll see the little lights start flashing because it's going, yeah, you asked for this, but you're not getting that much. <laughs> right. Because we're in sport mode. You don't have that much traction. It's all based on traction levels too. Uh, next mode, race. It's just like sport. You have full power, but it's, this is what they recommend for riding on the street because it is set for the traction levels that you have on asphalt roads. Okay. And it's so paying attention for loose gravel, that kind of stuff. Once you get to slick, that is assuming that you are on, uh, it's assuming that you're on race tires. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be slick tires necessarily, but it is like a track approved tire and you're on a track surface, which 
you know is much grippier than the road. Sure. So you do have to be careful if you're riding in slick on the road. It's not really meant for that. And it's assuming no gravel or anything. And then when we're in slick mode, they added this awesome feature too. It even has seven, it has 14 total positions. We can go up to positive seven, yeah. which means it's going to intervene more. Uh, you'd see the light flashing more. Or we can go down to negative seven, where it's almost doing something. It's going to let the front wheel lift more. It's going to, if you go full throttle, it's going to give you full throttle, yeah. unless it's something really crazy happens between the two wheel speeds. Or when you're leaned over. Okay. Because it is true traction control, it's looking at your lean angle also. Oh, wow. Uh, and in order to get in a slick mode, you have to have that plug installed. You do right? have to have the plug installed, mm -hmm. which we didn't show. It was under the seat. Yeah. I believe we've shown it before. We'll, we'll point it out at a later point in time. And then our user mode, that's a nice one. We can set the suspension, the engine, and the ABS at different modes in our user mode. Right now, they're all on slick. Okay. Uh, I believe. Hold it. Get it in user. Is that in our setup menu? User mode. Oh. So we go to our user mode then. And we can change, say we really like how ABS works in slick. We don't like how DTS, DTC feels in slick though, because it's gonna firm up the suspension. Yeah. I can hold it and put my DTC in sport, oh, wow. so it's not gonna be quite as firm. Yeah, that's sweet. Mm. Oh yeah, I gotta hold the button again. And leave everything else in slick. Yeah. And then when I enter that user mode, that's how it is. That's as awesome. long as that plug is plugged in, it's going to save it yeah. when you shut the key off, the key off, which is also nice because it doesn't always save stuff. Uh, you can set user mode. You can also set the level of traction control, the plus or minus seven. So say you usually have slick at zero, but then your user mode is negative seven for when you really got to race someone down the road yeah um, yeah yeah you just click the user mode real fast you can change these the bike either has to be stationary or when you're riding you just have to let off the throttle pull the clutch in you'll see the mode change rev match let back off on the clutch and you change modes yep so you can change on the fly i mean it's really an awesome package yeah i think uh, so other creature comfort heated grips oh yeah that means they're on high that means they're on low okay if your battery's not up to snuff, it won't let your heated grips come on, so it won't leave you stranded. Okay. Uh, cruise control, which we mentioned before. Yeah. Most bikes don't have it. You can set it. It has the full cruise control functions, just like your car. Set, resume, accelerate. Yeah. When you push accelerate, it goes up one mile per hour at a time. Nice. To shut it off, you hit either a brake, you can roll forward on the throttle, pull the clutch in, or shut it off by the button. Nice. Uh, you can turn the ABS traction control completely off. They say that that's done if you're stuck in a gravel pit or something, because it might be trying to spin so much you yeah. can't get out. Other than that, I think that's about all the features I can think of. That's a, that's a quite a bit. That's 20 minutes of features, Zach. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't really think of anything else. Like I said, write down any questions you got. Try to get to them and answer them. All right. Well, thanks for watching. All right. I think we'll move on to the next video where we'll get some mechanics work going again. <laughs> okay, man. Sound good? Yep. All right. See everyone later. Thanks, Bye. Zach. All right. So we just got educated by Zach on the user features of the 2018 S1000RR. That was pretty awesome. So go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking subscribe. New videos are always uploaded to the channel. Support the new bike build series. Click on the link right there to uh, watch videos from seasons one and two of the new bike build series. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for viewing.